Welcome to a Besto TV production. If you enjoy our content, please click the subscribe button. To get notifications of new releases, ring that bell. Thank you, and away we go. Creative continuity. We bring the convention to you. This is Mr. Lobo, and I'm here at RetroCon in Oaks, Pennsylvania for creative continuity. And I am here with James Rolfe, uh, who is very famous in the world of the YouTubes. pizza, but I'll take it anyway. Oh, not funny. Think of it as a gift. You owe it to yourself to play those games. I hear they're awesome. No, they're not. You've got a whole media empire now. Oh, uh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got a movie, Uh-huh. right? You yeah. got, you've got a, a toys. Right? Uh, we have. We've been trying to work on some more, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, toys are our tough. When you get into physical, uh, toys are you know, tough. You made you made it when it gets to toys, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh huh. Video games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I guess I guess I've been around in different medias. Yeah. Different medias. Different medias. And and it started very very small. This game sucks. Castlevania 1 and 3 are great classic Nintendo games, but for Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, the game designers obviously were not thinking straight. Now let's talk first about Angry Video Game oh, Nerd yeah. as a phenomenon, mm -hmm. right? Is that you are not that person. Uh, not, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are very kind and oh, kind yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, smooth and, and, and nice well, I would as a person. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. uh, mild, you know, mm -hmm. mild mannered, right? Like Clark, uh -huh. like Clark Kent, right? Oh, yeah, sort of, yeah. There you, know? you go, Superman. Clark Kent, Superman. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, what this character mm -hmm. obviously came from you, uh -huh. but as a person mm -hmm. who is maybe a little introspective, maybe uh -huh. a little bit of an introvert, yeah. right? Guy who likes to watch movies, mm -hmm. play video games. Were there people in your life who were really abrasive and obnoxious and critical that kind of fed into the creation of a character oh, like that? Oh, like did it come from any like truth or anything? Uh, some angry bosses and things like that. A few things here and there, but nothing so much where like, a lot of it was really just imagination, just like making a character. Of course I had the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt combo cartridge, but the first game I attempted was Ghosts and Goblins. That's right, this is the first NES game I ever played. And that's one hell of a game to start with. You are your audience, you're doing something that's close to you, and then you're connecting to people who kind of feel the same way about things. Yeah. You know, and I think too that even though, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself an angry video game nerd mm -hmm. by any extent, some of those early games were so frustrating that it, it literally broke your mind, yeah. you know? <laughs> I mean, like the E.T. game, you know, the uh, E.T., the extraterrestrial mm -hmm. a game for Atari. I remember getting that in, uh, was 82, is that right? 1982? Uh, I, I believe that's right, 82, yeah. When that came out, I was 11, mm -hmm. I think, 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was like Christmas was all about this game. Okay. I was so excited to finally get this game. Wow. I had seen that movie <laughs> and I was so, uh -huh. like, ready to play <laughs> this game. And it was so mind-bendingly difficult. E.T. on Atari 2600. To begin with, it's not a game you just pick up and play. Most games this generation were very simple. Shoot a bunch of aliens, climb to the top of the screen, stop missiles, or chomp down all the pellets. But E.T. is an enigma. With all these random symbols appearing at the top of the screen and falling in holes all the time, it's no wonder why gamers didn't understand how to play this game. You have to read the instruction manual. So. Once you understand how to play the game, it still f***ing sucks! At what point did you decide, okay, we need to make a movie? Oh, it was, well, it was because of that E.T. game and the whole story where it was buried in this landfill. It's like, okay, that's the basis for a film. So we have to take it in a fictional, fictional direction where it's like, okay, the games are buried in this landfill, but all the games are 
pieces of an alien spaceship and like kind of take it in this um you know the science fiction direction and uh it was like this movie just has to be made and it has to star the nerd that's a, that's an exciting story that you know as a fan mm -hmm. you know you've got all these influences and these things that, mm -hmm. that that you've kind of brought into your world and now you're putting something back in I mean, you've got a yeah. character and a story and a movie that people you know you, you know you You've taken all these games and things that you like and put it into your work mm -hmm. because you yeah. love that stuff, and now you're putting something back in. Yeah. You've got a character and a story that other people are enjoying, and it's part of their language and their life yeah. and what they do. Uh huh. Yeah, you do kind of collect a lot. Like it, it has. You got Japanese monster in it. You got big, you know, Godzilla-sized monster. You got like zombies. You have robots. You have. It was basically just like, hey, let's just make a fun movie. Throw everything in the pot that we like. Why and not? Then just, you know. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Like the next movie is pro probably going to be about just one thing. It's going to be like like one topic. But this is kind of like a celebration of all these different genres and things that, that we like. You should review E.T. No. They give the game to one person to design in five weeks. That's bullshit. That's exactly what you say in the video. I can't even be pissed off and have it mean anything anymore. I heard that Atari recall all of the cartridges and buried them somewhere in the middle of the desert because the game was so bad. Out here in the New Mexico desert, something allegedly happened many years ago. Yeah, we're talking ET. It sounds like they're looking for extraterrestrials. Something tells me you're not just some gamer. But the gamer. Did you finance this movie? Oh yeah, it was a fundraiser on Indiegogo. Uh -huh. And uh, we had lots of fan involvement with it. Um, lots of fans were working on it. And uh, basically it was all about like, hey, if you want to see this movie, let's help, you know, get it made. Like, like where people could actually help to help uh, to get the movies made that they want to see. So it was really like this, it was just a fan project, like from the beginning. And it had that same feeling where you're in the theater and showing it live, like over and over again. Like people were just going nuts, and like people were laughing and they're applauding, and uh, it just had this amazing reaction. And when That's you're there, wonderful. yeah. So I was trying yeah. to make it like make the theater, you know, a fun house, like William Castle. Like yeah. just have a good time. It's like not a serious movie. You're not you're not supposed to take it serious. It's just like laugh, have a good time, and, and that's what it's about. is Criswell mm. in Plan 9, and you are Officer Policeman, right? Yeah. <laughs> cop Policeman is your officer first Officer Cop Policeman. I, mean, I was there for like a week or, or less, but I, but I knew the project was going on for a long time. Like there was lots of shooting that happened uh, before I was there and a lot that happened after I was there. But what I saw while I was there was, uh, was just great to be a part of. It was a lot of fun to be a part of it, and uh, you know, it was uh, it was a struggle for them. I mean, I think that it took eight years or something mm -hmm. for it to all come from when yeah. we filmed to when it finally was available in mm -hmm. this country for the mass market. When you yeah. walk in the Walmart, and there it is, and it was exciting yeah. to be in the Walmart. Oh, nice! You know, yeah. Uh, Somebody texted me a picture of it. So yeah, like, there's a movie. Yeah. Here you are in the Walmart. Yeah, you know? that's cool. And one of the things uh, uh, briefly that we both share, I think, is a love of board games. Oh yeah, I love board games, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, you have another program where you are board games, yeah, right? uh -huh. which I actually like a little bit more than the Angry Video oh, yeah. Gamer <laughs> as a show. Yeah, I mean, uh, me, me too, honestly, just because it had like this story arc that I I don't know why board games got that, not the nerd, but I felt like when I did board games, I just loved that direction, that horror twist that it took, 
and I just love going down that dark path and seeing where it led. Well, and I love that aspect <laughs> of it. And as a horror fan yeah. and as a comedy fan, it was it, I, horror comedy is probably my favorite genre. Mm -hmm. It was nice to see it get a little dark and weird. Yeah. What do you get when you take a random assortment of different characters, put them all in an old mansion on a dark and stormy night with a fortune to claim, throw in some murders, a little mystery, and you get 13 Dead End Drive. Ah, oh, you got me. I'm dead. Well, well, next up. <laughs> Makes it for a lot more filming. Where you're playing the game, you're just recording the, the playback of the game with a video game. But with a board game, it's like you have to get all the camera setups. Okay, let's get a close up of the dice rolling. Wait, we need to show you rolling a, a, a seven. Can you roll a seven? Oh, oh, you got it, but it bounced out of the frame. Can you do it again? <laughs> Rolling that dice is probably like at like 50 takes to get it, what you're trying to do. So it's basically you have to film all the stuff yeah, because there's yeah. no, you know, that's the only way to do it. Sure, yeah. sure, it's physical and you have yeah. to photograph everything. Yeah. So it's a much more, uh, uh -huh. it's a much more layered uh, project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely was a lot more work to get. The, the Board James videos tended to be a lot shorter than nerd episodes for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite yeah. board game? Oh, favorite board game. You know, I, I, Tornado Rex still holds up because it's so simple. Lord <laughs> James is a guy who's like too obsessed with the past. He is, he's overly obsessed with it, and that's where like a, a lot of the darkness in the show happens. Where kind of like the message in that show is that you gotta. You gotta live in the present, you gotta move forward, you know, you gotta put things behind. Um, but, at, you know, it's still cool to like, go back to like, you know, old games and movies and things. It's, it's cool to like, relive things in that way, but but you still can't like, live your life in the past. And that's what Board James is doing. We're excited about everything that you're doing. So yeah. thank you once again for uh, letting us uh, talk with you today oh, on Creative Continuity. And uh, this is Mr. Lobo with James Rolfe, signing off. Watch Creative Continuity, COD Tunes, Con Rewind, Mr. Lobo Does, and more on this channel. Creative Continuity, we bring the convention to you.